Um, today we'll be talking through activity of daily livings and more specifically demonstrating a sit to stand movement. Many people do underestimate the importance of carrying out this technique properly because it, but since it is such a functional activity of everyday life, it's important that we're exercising the correct muscles and not throwing our body out of balance as doing so, because falling could lead to um, major injuries. Um, as you're sitting, as naturally you would maintain a correct posture, a relaxed posture, upright position. Your feet would be shorter width apart or more often than not in line with the chair legs. Um, making sure that your knees aren't bending inwards too much, that follow the traction of your toe. And your face, um, face is in forward position so that they're relaxed and there's no tension in your neck. As you're coming up, you'll be easing the body weight slowly throughout your feet, forward to the ball of your feet. But you want to make sure that you're not easing all of your weight and distributing it evenly throughout the movement. And as you're standing up, you'll be slowly extending the knees and the hips at the same time, so you're not throwing the body out of balance once again. As you come up, it's sometimes easy to have your hands out in front of you as a counterbalance, so that you can have something to look at sometimes so that you maintain your posture. As you come up slowly like this. Many people are tempted to lean forward too much when they're standing up, and if you really think about your movements carefully, it prevents that from happening. And you have to make sure your hips are coming up at the same time, not throwing your body out of whack and not favouring one side of your body more than others. So as you're doing so like that. Now I'll give you a little turn to demonstrate. Yeah, make sure your feet are shorter width apart, facing forward, and your knees are facing outwards as well. And as you see now your feet, your body weight is naturally at the heel of your feet, you'll have to slowly ease it forward. And as you're standing up now. Slowly extend both hips and knees at the same time. Yep, and you keep keeping your arms out in front of you, it acts as a counterbalance, so you don't fall forwards too much. Um, if you do have trouble coming up and your hips are coming up at uh, different times that you find, you can use a table to help balance yourself, but it's important to not rest your full body weight there, just to act as a balance, so you're still exercising your own body and muscles. So give it another go. Yeah, if you can find that you're doing that perfectly well, coming up evenly on both sides of your hip, you can just keep progressing without using a table for, to help balance yourself. They come up again without the table, and then the arms out in front of you. Yeah? Yeah, there you go. Okay, we're going to do a therapeutic exercise. Uh, more specifically, we're going to do the free squat, okay? So we're going to do a uh, squat, it's quite a functional exercise in every day. Um, you know, we do things to pick up things, um, you know, bending over to, you know, to put things away, things at home, and especially in the workplace, etc. Today we're going to be doing it because we have had a little bit of an injury, and we're going to strengthen up those quadricep muscles, as well as those knees and, you know, glutes as well, okay? Um, so, the most important thing is to make sure we maintain an adequate posture, okay? Because the squat is quite bearing on our core, and um, if we make sure we keep our core nice and tense, we control our breathing, we'll, we'll, we'll adequately take up the exercise. So the first thing first um, is our positioning of our feet. So we're going to have our feet about shoulder width apart, okay? We're going to have our chest up, chest forward, core active, okay? And what we're going to do is bend back our knees and our hips at the same time, okay? So we don't want to be bending our hips too far uh, early or our knees, okay? And as we come down, we want to make sure our knees keep a straight angle here, just at 90 degrees. We don't want to have that knee to come too far forward, okay? And we don't want to see our chest come over too much, so we put a bit straight in our back, okay? So with our feet shoulder width apart, we want to bend back our hips and our knees coming down, keeping the chest up, all the way down, all the way down, keeping our hands forward as a counterbalance. Small pause at the bottom, coming up with our head up, driving through our heels. Okay, we can give that one a go. Okay, let's go. So first things first, yep, so we have our feet that shoulder width apart, so that's about right. Okay, keeping our chest forward, taking a big breath in as we're going down, and that's so right there, coming down, and driving upwards through our heels, through our heels. Okay, alright, so a couple of things we're going to work on here. There's a little bit of, uh, a little bit, there's two things that we need to work on with our technique. First thing is with our heels, with our knees. Okay, so we're not really sitting onto our, our, our heels and driving through our heels, and that's because we're bringing our knees too far forward. 
So as we're coming down, your knee's coming forward, and that's putting a lot of pressure onto the ball of that foot. It's not going to be as stable, and you can actually cause a little bit of knee damage later on if you continue to do this. So as you're coming down, making sure we're keeping on our heels and coming down, coming down. Okay, so keep on. You'll see how my knees move forward slightly, but don't come over my toes, and I'm staying on my heels. Okay, and driving upwards. And the second thing is just watching that chest. So if your chest came over a bit, it could be due to a little bit of high, tight hip flexors, but really focus on keeping that chest proud as coming down. Okay, but they'll work hand in hand if we sit on our, on our heels. Okay, let's get that last shot. That's it. That's it. Chest start, bring it down on your heels. Oh, perfect. Excellent. Okay, let's do that another four times. Going down nice and slowly. Driving upwards, good work. And let's breathe this time. So breathing in as we come down. Good job, and breathing up. Excellent. That's it. Let's keep that up. That's it. Chest power. Good work. So today we'll be looking at manual handling tasks. Uh, in particular, we'll be picking up an object today. Yeah. Okay, so the most important things in the workplace is probably maintaining your foot posture when picking up objects and also being conscious of how twisting your body and where your body's actually positioned. So we want to avoid things like knee injuries, ankle injuries, and in particular lower back injuries. Okay, so for, today, for today's example, we're going to be picking up this bag this year. Yep. So as I approach the bag, I'm going to keep my feet about shoulder width apart. And when I, uh, when I sink down into picking up the bag, I want to keep my chest up, and my shoulders square, and my head completely straight. So what's going to happen is, as I come down towards the bag, my hips and my knees are going to come down at the same angle and I'm going to keep that chest nice and straight and I'm going to sink all the way down. So when I'm at the bottom, I'm going to firmly grip the bag so I don't want it slipping forward. If it comes forward, I might be tempted to lean forward in which case I'm going to do a lot of lower back damage as the object becomes far away from my body. But I could also be bringing my knees over my toes to try and reach it and sit back up. Which means when I stand back up, all the pressure is going to be in my toes come possibly an injury of ankles or knees and it's just going to wear me down. Yeah. So bring that bag nice and close, my chest is up, my shoulders are square, head straight, my knees come down in line with my toes, but not over them, I get a firm grip on the bag, and as I stand back up, I'm going to bring the bag as close to my shins and thighs as possible. So if the bag's too far out, again, you're going to come with lower back damage and it's not going to be great. So from here, that's all the way up, yeah. and that's just how back on the ground, I'll just do it once more for you. My knees come down with my toes, hips, knees come down at the same angle, and my chest is up, shoulders square. And you'll notice that I don't twist at all. I keep my back completely straight with the object coming right at the next level. Alright, so I think it's going to be straight. So, yep, at about hip width, and chest up, shoulders square, and you want your hips and knees to come down at the same angle. Firm grip on the bag. Okay, so let's get you to put the bag down. So, okay, so what happened there was you started to twist your hips. So, what we basically what we want to do is when we pick up any object, we want to have the weight even in both feet, and we want to come up with our body completely straight. Yeah. So, a reason why you may have done this is if you have tight hip flexors in particular, you may favor that side, and then you'll twist to that side. Uh, another reason is you might have tight foot muscles. Or so one way to uh, eliminate any of that possibility is a uh, pre-stretch before work. Yep. So you can stretch your hip flexors, uh, just do a simple quad stretch, or just a general warm-up. So basically remember, when we come down, we want our weight even in our feet, shoulders square, and our head straight, chest up, and we come down, then we pick the bag, and we don't want to weigh to one side, we just want to come up completely straight. Okay. So really just try to even the weight through each feet and push up through each heels. Chest up, shoulder square, head straight, even, push up to 